Greetings and welcome to the podcast about nothing and everything. I'm your host, Dave, and I'm sure you're asking yourself, what does that mean? A podcast about nothing and everything. Well, it's pretty simple, see. I have so many passions and interests in this world. I mean, it's just a slew of things, right? Uh, movies and TV and music and, and sports and books and toys and comic books and some really weird stuff. I mean, not like weird in a funky kind of way, but you know what I mean. Ob obscure stuff, you know, whatever. I, I feel like I dug myself in a hole there. Anyway, I have all these interests and all these passions, right? And some of them get very specific to, to certain uh, aspects and genres of those fields. And, and I love to talk about them, right? I like to spew on them. I like to report news on them. I like to uh, talk to other people about them. And I'm also a podcaster, right? I have a, a wrestling podcast, which I'll talk to you about here in a little bit, and uh, I do a few other things. And it's like everything that I'm passionate about, I, I want to do a podcast, but I can't, right? I don't have uh, this endless amount of time to do that. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do a podcast that's just going to be a catch-all. It's basically just going to be me on here talking about anything and everything whenever I feel like it. I know that sounds very unorganized and all over the place, and maybe it is, but I think it's going to work because I think you're going to enjoy some of the things I talk about um, because I think you're going to be on the same wavelength as me, right? There's got to be people out there that have a lot of cross-section with my interests. And um, basically, here's what I'm thinking. Um, each each uh, piece of content that I put out there, each episode, if you will, of this podcast will be about something in particular, right? I'm not going to have each episode be just all over the place. That's a little too disconjointed for my brain. Uh, so each episode will have something specific I talk about. Now, I'm basically going to just put them out when the mood hits me. That might be once a week. That might be six times a week. It, who knows um, what that might be. When the, when the fancy hits me, I'm going to put something out there. And that's, that's it. That's the way it's going to work. <laughs> I mean, I know that sounds very uh, vague, but just stick around. You're going to, uh, you're going to enjoy it. Um, so today's episode is, uh, we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about baseball, right? Um, because when people that know me really, if they were to explain me, one of the first things they would say I love is baseball. I'm a huge baseball fan. I, I played when I was young. I have watched as long as I can remember. I am just, I'm a, a diehard fan. I, I, I watch everything. I can watch everything from Little League to the Major Leagues and everything in between. I just, I love baseball. And if you truly know me, even more specifically, you know that I am a diehard St. Louis Cardinals fan. Now, um, I know right now baseball is in this, professional baseball, Major League Baseball, is in this weird place, this weird state. And it's frustrating. And I do have a little segment later where I, I kind of go off on the, about the lockout. Uh, but I thought I'd start. And again, these episodes, let me let me back the train up. These episodes, they may go from five minutes to uh, an hour and a half or what, who knows what to. I'm not putting time restraints on it. Whatever I feel like talking, I feel like talking. Whatever, however much I need to dive into these topics, I'm going to dive into these topics. And again, at some points I'll have, I'll have guests on, right? I'll have people that I know uh, that have these the same passions as me is if you know if I'm going to talk about something, I'm going to have one. I don't have one today or in this episode, uh, but it's it, trust me, it, it'll it'll work. I, this is going to be fun. But back to baseball. Let's let's talk about my love of baseball. See, I've always loved baseball ever since I was a little kid. I, I don't know what it was. I, it's probably catching it uh, when they did the weekly games on TV or catching it on WGN, uh, the Cubs games, uh, or maybe then or on TBS with the Braves games. I, I never liked the Cubs or the Braves, but it was baseball on TV, and, and you didn't have the uh, the accessibility to games and stuff like you do now. And I, I understand if you are a subscriber uh, to MLB TV, I know accessibility is a weird word to use when it refers to Major League Baseball. But back then, you you only got like a weekly game on on the big networks, and then you know, like I said, WGN would air uh, Cubs and sometimes White Sox games, and uh, uh, TBS would would air the Braves games. Um, but I lived close enough to Cincinnati that that was all over the radio too. Uh, I would get Reds games on the radio and I would listen to them all the time. Right. I would that you hear those stories of kids 
under their blankets with the radio on listening to to baseball or what have you. That was me. I, I did that, you know, and I listened. It was so fascinating. It was such a world. And I remember, I don't remember the exact age I was. I was pretty young. I had to have been, I don't know, probably, I would, I'd venture to guess the 8 to 10 range, maybe, uh, when I went to my first professional game. And it was a Reds game at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, and they were playing the Dodgers. I remember that. I don't remember much else. Like I said, it would probably had to have been from 83, 80 to 85, somewhere in that range. Um, my dad got tickets and tucked me in. Man, I remember walking in and and seeing that and, and, and going to my seats and just getting to take it all in and seeing the players out there and the smell of the grass. I when I was a kid, I've never had a very strong sense of smell, but you could I could smell that 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 smell about you know the the grass and then the the hearing the vendors and the people and the cheers and I was I was already hooked, but man, that just sunk it in deeper. It was such a fascinating world. And my wife and I, uh, we have a mission, you know, to go see every major league ball park. We try to go every year uh, to see a new one. Uh, lately, obviously, the last few years, it's been a little hard to do. But uh, but we also like to hit up a lot of minor league ballparks. Um, but it's a, uh, and you know, when I was a kid, I would, I mean, I would scrape up every bit of money I could to buy comic books or baseball cards. And I remember. Uh, you know, later when I got started working when I was uh, 14, actually, or no, wait, no, I'm sorry. I was probably close. I was 15. Uh, I started working and having a little more money. And, uh, man, I remember like the 90 Donner set with the uh, the red border. And I just, I built it from scratch. The whole set from packs that I bought um, would buy up every magazine I could on the new set. And I remember uh, one of my best friends, uh, well, probably my best friend of, uh, Greg Barnes, you know, who, who passed away not too long ago, you know, rest, rest in peace, uh, Greg, I mean, I miss him. Um, when we were in high, getting to uh, high school, uh, that is when, uh, oh, middle school into high school, it's when fantasy baseball became a thing and there was magazines, right? And we started playing fantasy baseball and it was just be him and his younger brother that would do this, but we were, it was so new. Everything was so new with it. And there was no, there was no computerized anything then like that, right? It was not the common. And I remember, uh, you know, we would keep stats and keep these stats by hand in like these ledger type books by pouring over USA Today and, and figuring it up. Man, it was, it was great. It was, I um, mean, you know, I miss the days of pouring through the sports page uh, and the, seeing the box scores and seeing how players did and who was leading the leagues and everything. And it's just Baseball is this magical thing for me, right? And it, and, and everything about it, man—the uniforms, the teams, the play, the smoothness, the the crack of the bat, the uh, the pop of the glove, uh, you know, the uh, you know, a beautifully turned double play, uh, the stats and how they work. Everything about it is just—I have always been fascinated, and I, and I and I I you know, I love reading historical books about baseball and biographies about baseball players. And uh, everything else, and uh, like I said, here in a second, I'm gonna I have a, a separate little segment I did when I talked about some of my reaction to the lockout and and everything, and uh, what's frustrating, and I and I think I mentioned this in that segment, but I'll it it, it bears saying uh, twice. Uh, this you know this time of year uh, is is spring training time, and that is the to me is when the year starts. You know, when when players and catchers report or uh, pitchers and catchers report and then, you know, by this time we'd have games and full camps and everything. And, man, that's to me, that's that's when spring hits. And that's when the year starts. And then those next few months, it's, you know, baseball's everywhere. I, I always have either uh, a game on um, or, you know, or scores up, pulled up or a, a sports channel on with highlights or or something. I, I'm consumed with baseball and it feels so weird to me to not have that right now. And, and again, I'll touch on that in a minute, but uh, baseball, baseball has probably, probably been my, my longest passion of my life and my longest love of my life. Um, is, which is why I kind of wanted to touch on it. it. Plus the relevancy of the time. Uh, but that's why I wanted to kind of touch on it first is because as long as I can remember, Baseball was always there, you know, and I, and again, I mean, you could throw, you know, toys and comics and, and cartoons and all that right up there, too, because those were always very integral. And I, and those were always there as long as I can remember. But but baseball was always there. I mean, my dad played softball and we'd go out in the yard and play catch 
And, uh, you know, when my friends, uh, particularly Greg, who I mentioned earlier, would come over or I'd go over there, man, we'd, we'd play wiffle ball or we'd throw a baseball around or, you know, and emulate, <laughs> try to emulate the batting stances and swings of our favorite players. And then uh, I remember we lived so remote, it was hard to, the area I lived in, we didn't really have an area baseball team. Back where I lived in the county, each little area had their own, you know, little league team in, in this uh, area. Um, and where I lived was so remote, we didn't have that, but eventually I did, I started playing on Greg's team. Uh, they had, they had room, right? You had the same players every year on these teams. It was wild, but they had a kid that either didn't play or moved away or something. And I, I ended up playing with them uh, for a couple of years and it was great. And, uh, I, I was, oh, being on the field, uh, was oh, so amazing. <laughs> and then my kids, uh, I, we have five sons and they, they all played baseball and, and different forms of baseball and competitive baseball to a degree. And it was great. And, you know, they would get to go, uh, you know, to the uh, AAA team that was close to us. And they did these campouts on the field and these things where they get to line up with the players and run the bases and all these things. You know, we had a, a night where we spent the night there and we, we slept, got to sleep on the outfield grass. And it was, that's incredible. That was so incredible to me. I, I, it's, I cannot explain enough how magical baseball is for me. Uh, but then, you know, I'm going to start, I'm going to stop, uh, I'm going to stop spewing on baseball, my love of it for now. Uh, and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll play that little segment where I talk about the lockout in a, uh, a different vein. And then we'll close up this, uh, this little mini episode here and, and call it a day. But let's talk about major league baseball and the lockout and the uh, canceling of series and whatever else. Listen, here's my thing. I know people fall on both sides of the fence, right? There's people that see uh, the the league and the teams and their perspective on it. And there's people that see the union and the players and their perspective on it. And I, I can see a little of both. But fact of the matter is, dude, let's find some middle ground and let's get it done. There's going to have, these are negotiations, right? You're negotiating a contract. There's going to be give and take. And I don't feel like either side is giving and taking enough. Well, they're taking. They want to take. Let's Okay, they're not giving enough, right? Let me rephrase that. There's, there's always been this, these little moves, right? Oh, we'll give a little here and hope that's right. Give everybody's, you're going to have to give on some things and you're going to have to take on others. Both sides are going to have to meet in the middle. I understand both sides have their perfect scenario of what they want this contract to be. Guys, you're not going to get it, right? That's not, that's not right. That's not fair for both sides to get everything, but there is going to have to be some, some mediation here. I think I know the players, the union does not want mediation. I get that. Something's going to be done. They're not getting it sealed. They're, they're, they're still huge gaps. Someone's going to have to help these guys get it done. And, and let's please get it done because, my Lord, I need baseball. The fact that there should be spring training games right now is killing me. I want to watch baseball so bad. I, there's My life, when this time hits, it shifts gears, right? Because I'm always checking scores. I'm always watching clips. I'm always watching games. It feels different to me. When baseball starts, when spring training even starts, it, it feels like spring. It feels like, yeah, the year is finally beginning. Uh, everything before that's just like, ah, this is like the hangover from the previous year. And I'm so out of sorts with this, right? Because there's no baseball. These things aren't happening. It's like, I am. what do I do, right? How do I adjust to this? And it is so frustrating because, you know, the the obviously the biggest victims in all this is the fans. I mean, there's series being canceled. There's spring training games being canceled and and let's don't talk about the guy the the guys and gals that are working at these times that depend on this it's their livelihood right the concession workers the ticket takers the the security all this stuff it's such a mess and i everybody wants to talk about the billionaires versus the millionaires that, that that's not fair right i understand the the league and the teams yes they are filthy rich and i get that and i understand it's not fair to call the players the millionaires because all the players are not millionaires. There is a, a huge chunk, if not the majority chunk, I don't know the numbers right in front of me, of players that they're not millionaires. They're not making these huge-ass contracts. And I understand wanting a little more for these people. I understand wanting justification and and compensation for those uh, the uh, new contract or whatever, the five-year and less contract guys that want uh, compensation when they're high achievers. I get all that. I understand it. Uh, but again, both sides, hey, you're not going to get everything. So give some on both sides. Take some on both sides. Try to find some middle ground on this. Both of you need to have open minds 
to understanding that, hey, this is going to be game-changing stuff, right? This is we're, we're changing the face of the union and the league interactions, and, and that's fine. That's great. It always happens, right, all the time. But damn it, get it done. Sit down. Don't leave until you do. You know, quit being children. Act like adults. Get it done. And Rob Edford, you, you need to go, dude. You're, you're just you're horrible as a commissioner, right? Because you are supposed to be mediating these things. You're supposed to be looking at both sides. You're supposed to be fair. You're supposed to be the one that keys up and mans up and tells these people, let's get it done. Let's let's talk. You get off that. You get off that. Come on. Let's put baseball first and do it. And you're not. All right. You're not. You you're you're laughing and you're joking about canceling games. You're smiling. You're you're trying to put these people as victims of this and that regardless of what side you fall on, regardless, whether you're a, a player's guy or a team guy or whatever, Rob Manfred or, or, he, he needs to go. He needs to be fired. We need a new commissioner of baseball, someone who will do the job better, someone who will put baseball first, someone who will who will quit. I, I don't even know. Man, he's just horrible, right? It, it, some of the things he does and the way he carries himself is horrible. So, I think we're in agreement. I, most baseball fans, I, I believe, are in agreement that, hey, this needs to get done. We need baseball. Rob Manfred needs to go. Let's fire him and get somebody else, and let's get on with it. Uh, again, huge baseball fan. You're going to hear a lot of baseball talk here on this podcast. And that's right now, as I sit, is my two cents on the baseball lockout. All right. There you have it. That's, uh, that's all I'm going to do today on baseball. Baseball will be something that uh, we'll revisit several times here on the show. I just can't. Like I said, I, I, I love baseball so but. Since they're not playing, since they're not doing anything, not much more to say at the moment, right? We're going to put that on a pause until they get their acts together and we have baseball back, Major League Baseball back. Uh, follow me on my social medias, right? Uh, go to, uh, excuse me, go to uh, Twitter. My personal account is at Mr. Geek Dave. And uh, the show has a Twitter account called A Nothing Pod uh, that I might use sporadically. But follow the Mr. Geek Dave one because that's where most of my stuff is. And then... Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a huge wrestling, pro wrestling fan also. And I have a wrestling uh, podcast too. So look it up. It's called Wrestling Nostalgia with Dave Dynasty. Uh, subscribe to that. And if you are into wrestling, uh, then follow me on my wrestling Twitter, which is at the Dave Dynasty. So that's it. Go to Twitter, follow at Mr. Geek Dave, and follow at the Dave Dynasty, and you'll be good to go. Uh, you can also look me up on YouTube. Uh, look up youtube.com slash the Dave Dynasty and Follow me there. Subscribe to me there. Lots of wrestling content there as well. Uh, wrestling will be something we'll touch on a lot on the show. Uh, so, at some point, I'll be back with something else. Who knows when, who knows where, and who knows what. But until then, wherever you go, whatever you do, be good, be safe, and keep on growing. <laughs>